Hey, this is kind of a weird one because it seems like pre-orders are open for a Linux-based standalone VR system, the first one of this kind pretty much, with which specs, retro design and an open source operating system. And it's also very expensive. But why is that so interesting? Well, let's get into it. All right, so this one is super interesting, mostly for the specs that they are very particular to be in this kind of device, a standalone device. At the same time, it kind of shows a way where manufacturers actually move into a standalone world, and we also see there's kind of a preference lately for x86 processors instead of relying on ARM processors that are the one that you have on your phone, for example, and the same that you have on the Oculus Quest 2 if you have that one. Because yeah, what's particular about this? Well, this is pretty much a virtual reality headset with strapped in a nook. I don't know if you know the nook, but they are like a very small kind of portable PCs. So imagine having your desktop PC, well, on your face. And this creates already kind of specific niche in the market, something that we don't have yet. But let's go through the specs because they are super interesting indeed. Well, here we're gonna boost the nice 7 1165G7 CPU with integrated Iris Xe GPU, the next generation integrated graphics from Intel. It's gonna have 16 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM and one terabyte of NVMe SSD. That's a lot. For connection, it's gonna have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and it's gonna have plenty of ports with one USB-C Thunderbolt 4, two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, two of USBs are complicated, and two USB-A 3.2. But of course, we have to talk about the VR parts as well because the PC is just strapped on it. And well, here we have dual LCD display with a resolution of 2448 by 2448, so a bit higher than 4K running in 90 Hertz and 100 degrees three elements, not Fresnel lenses with 55 millimeter to 77 millimeter IPD. In front of the video, it's very nice that we can move individually the lenses and we also have the eye relief if you have glasses or not. So what is this for? Well, the particular thing here is that again, you have a PC on the back of your device. You're also gonna be able to actually detach the PC and use it with your regular monitor, your regular mouse and keyboard and stuff. But over here, the focus of this is more having a device where you can actually work around having your virtual desktop environment. Also similar, the company that's making this is making an open source distro for Linux. So they kind of creating their virtual reality headset to actually work on it and it's super cool indeed but yeah this is not really for gaming the focus here is actually using different windows and stuff and having like multiple monitors in your virtual environment you're gonna be able also to use the two cameras in front to have pass through so if you are the cafe well you can do what this guy is doing and i absolutely understand the reaction of the people around i don't know if i will do that but hey uh, that's a choice and also we know that drinking when having a VR headset on your face It's very uncomfortable and usually you spill everything on you. But hey choices Oh, by the way again the software is similar OS and you can browse everything on github already I'm gonna leave the link in the description below so you can check already the software over there help with the development if you are familiar with Linux and stuff. And uh, it's very cool that we're working on an uh, open source stuff over here. So again, this is pretty much a desktop PC strapped on a VR headset. So you sum up the two prices and gets very expensive indeed. The thing is that it's not really for gaming because again, the IRX XC uh, graphic card is not very powerful. It can, yes, play some games on flat, but it's not gonna be able to play VR games for sure. But at the same time, you're going to have the possibility to skip completely that PC part that we have attached on the back and use your regular PC to actually play your games and stuff. And using this as a regular PC VR headset with a very high resolution. That's a very good thing. The only problem is they never talked about controllers and the weird thing is that they use just the keyboard. So yeah, of course, the promotional video is not a working thing right now but yeah things take time it's just weird that they opened the pre-order already because the story of simula is very particular they wanted to start the kickstarter they had to sell at least 800 headset to actually even out with the cost of the headset but at the end they decided to don't do the kickstarter because it could fail and just start the, the pre-orders they, they are very expensive yes and uh, would i personally recommend to actually jump on it well 
you know, uh, if you really love Linux, maybe. I think that the project is very interesting, but at the same time, we can kind of achieve the same result using the Steam Deck in just some months, using the Steam Deck connected with USB Type-C uh, with the Oculus Quest 2. Well, VR is not supported from the Linux part of the Steam OS directly, but we know that we can run Windows on it and you know, the graphic card is powerful enough to actually run some games. I'm pretty sure of it. And four, five hundred dollars for the Steam Deck, plus three hundred dollars for the Oculus Quest 2, and uh, what, twenty dollars for a USB Type C cable, or you can even use a Wi Fi 6. Why not? Well, for sure, the price is going to be much lower than the twenty five or over three thousand dollars that this Simula One is asking for. Of course, I don't want to destroy the idea. I think that it's super interesting that they're actually trying to do something for a particular niche that really wants Linux also in VR. And it would be great probably for some people to work around and having their own virtual environment everywhere to focus really on the job. But yeah, it's very expensive. The retro look is kind of cool, to be honest. It's also very funny that we have USB everywhere on this device. Uh, but yeah, we have to see if First of all, it's gonna happen. And, you know, we know how things go uh, with Pimax, all the delays and stuff with a very big company. You can't really expect something from people that never did anything before. It's super interesting. I really root for these guys, but yeah, just be careful. And before I let you go, I wanna talk about something that is not sponsored by any means, but Vox Machina but is one of my favorite VR games, like Mac games super cool, super immersive. Uh, well, it's getting released for Quest 2 and also I added a story mode. Uh, I think that is going to be amazing because the problem with the game is like it was just multiplayer. So if you weren't really into that match and stuff, you weren't even getting into the game. But I saw a lot of interest from people every time that I show uh, the gameplay of it. Uh, like, uh, what's a game? What's a game? I want to play. I want to play. And not many people know about it. So I told like, uh, yeah, let's just say it. Uh, it's arriving on March 3rd on uh, the Oculus Quest 2 and uh, on PC VR, on Steam and stuff. It's going to be cross play. So you can actually play with PC people on Steam, also on Oculus. Super cool. And uh, yeah, I love the game. Maybe I'm going to see each other in the lobby. But first of all, I need to try the campaign. But yeah, that was all, guys. Are you interested in an open source VR headset? Or would you rather get the Steam Deck, put it in your pocket if it fits, and then use an Oculus Quest 2 to have pretty much the same result? Let me know in the comment below. And as always, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like, give a like, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you really love the channel, the join button in there. Don't forget also the Patreon. Thanks to all the Patreons who support the channel, of course. And uh, yeah, we're done here. See you guys next video. Ciao.